rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome St. Mark's and guests and friends to this virtual worship service. Thank you for joining us. You can find more information on the web and follow along in our bulletin today as well. As we gather in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. First, a couple of announcements. I'd like to first say thank you very much to each and every one of you for your friendship, for your faithship. Throughout this Lenten season, boy, what a Lent we've had. <laughs> it has been so different. And thank you to everyone who has participated in some sort of way in sharing the gospel. One of our baptismal promises is to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through our words and our deeds. We've had by my count, about two dozen different proclaimers of the gospel, either live or on video at St. Mark's during this Lenten season. Many more of us have also served with our deeds, helping to serve neighbors, sharing food, lifting up prayers, all sorts of other wonderful ways that you have served, including the team at St. Mark's even as we speak. So thank you very much, each and every one of you. On our announcement page, it mentions Vacation Bible School. And in that Vacation Bible School, a decision will be made tomorrow whether or not we're going to be able to have Vacation Bible School this coming summer. So go ahead and sign up today or tomorrow if at all possible, especially if you are thinking about helping to lead. Last night I received an email from someone who is not part of St. Mark's whose child did participate last summer at St. Mark's in Vacation Bible School. This was last night's email. The mother was reading to the daughter the story of Easter. And the daughter said, Mom, I already know this. And the mom said, How do you know it? She said, Because I went to that school last summer and they talked about the stone being rolled away and the man dying on the cross. The little girl and the mother were referring to St. Mark's Lutheran Church Vacation Bible School, proclaiming the good news that Christ has died, Christ is risen. Alleluia! The little girl knew the story because of your good work, because how we proclaim the good news of God in Christ through our words and our deeds. So thank you very much. And then this prayer before we continue with a litany. This is written by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. This Easter celebration is not like ones we've known. We pray in isolation. We sing the hymns alone. We're distant from our neighbors, from worship leaders too. No flowers grace the chancel to set a festive mood. No gathered choirs are singing, no banners lead the way. O oh God of love and promise, where's joy this Easter day? With sanctuaries empty, may homes become the place to ponder resurrection and celebrate your grace. We thank you, God, on Easter. Your church is blessed to be a scattered faithful body that's doing ministry in homes and in the places of help and healing too. Let us live the Easter message by gladly serving you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. At the break of dawn, a bird sings. The long night of darkness is over. The sun begins to shine. The, the sun, sun is risen. risen. It's a morning of glory, of, of love, love overcoming, overcoming death. death, of angels spreading good news, of, of people, people turning, turning from, from despair. despair. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with Him to new life. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters at the cross. You watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. 
Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may continue with our scripture readings. The first reading on this Easter Sunday is from the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. God raised him on the third day and allowed him to, to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has been, it's been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I invite our boys and girls to come forward for our children's message. As Robbie just ended that psalm, here's a little song. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Good morning, boys and girls. Wow, you are in great voice this morning. I could hear you singing. And wow, you're all dressed up. Look at those Easter dresses and those fancy clothes. Well, there's someone still in their pajamas. How about that? That is okay. It doesn't matter. God loves you. God loves us. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so we rejoice this day. We rejoice this day how we can remember that Jesus was put to death on the cross that Jesus loved people so much that people got upset with him and put him to death on the cross. And they took his body off the cross, they put it in a tomb, 
And then on the third day, which is the first day of the week, Sunday today, Christ was raised from the dead. He has been risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The angel came to the women with a greeting, just like Jesus came to the women with a greeting. Jesus in today's gospel says greetings. Now, greetings that Jesus is going to say in just a bit can also mean the word rejoice in the Greek. Rejoice, in other words, this is the day that the Lord has been raised. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a very special greeting, to rejoice. Jesus says to rejoice. The psalm says to rejoice. And friends, I have some other special friends who want to bring you a special Easter greeting today. So let's rejoice as we watch. Happy Easter, everybody. I hope you find all of your eggs, everyone. Hallelujah! 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 Happy Easter and stay safe. Hallelujah! Jesus rose again. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah! 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 Wow, what a, oh, thank you, Madison. Good throw. Thank you not just for passing on eggs, but for sharing the good news. That greeting that you all sang and shared just then, what was that word? Alleluia. Now, maybe, oh, here's another one. Thank you, Reston and, and Reagan. More eggs. Now, that greeting that you all said, Alleluia, it basically means, yea, God. Officially, it's praise the Lord, but it's yea, God. Yea, God, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice in it. We rejoice in Jesus' resurrection from the dead and the hope that it gives us all. But you know what? It's not just you proclaiming alleluia and not just me. It is the whole church. So I have some helpers behind me. I have the whole church, a lot of pictures from our church pictorial directory, some of your own crayon coloring pages as well, proclaiming that good word that starts with the word A-L-L, -L, which is all, all of us, or Alleluia saying, yea, God. Yea, God, that God helps us when we are sometimes broken, that God helps us no matter what color we are, whether we're feeling pink or, or blue, or even when we're sick, a little bit green. That God helps us sometimes when we're just hanging by a string. That God is with us always. So therefore, we rejoice. We say the word, Alleluia. Now, I would love to have you do me a favor, boys and girls, to have your mom and dad take a picture of you with a word alleluia or maybe even a video of you saying alleluia shouting it yelling it screaming it sharing the alleluia sharing your yay god and then send it to me okay that would be wonderful to help us all for easter for this is the day not only that god has made but this is the day that the lord has been raised we will rejoice and be glad in it Amen.
Let us continue with the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, but has been raised just as he told you. Come, see the place where he lay, and then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has been raised from the dead and that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him. So the women left the tomb quickly, with fear, but also with great joy. And they ran to tell the disciples, suddenly, suddenly, Jesus met them. Jesus said, greetings. Greetings. And the women, the women, they they came to him and they they took hold of his feet and they began to worship him. Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers that I am going ahead of them. To Galilee and there they will see me the gospel of the Lord praise to you O Christ may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight O Lord our rock and our Redeemer amen that gospel text from Matthew reminds me of so many wonderful possibilities for a sermon today. One of those is the phrase that the angel uses, he's not here. And we'll get to that in a moment, because Jesus is with you in your homes. I'm reminded of the Acts story that we heard a while ago where Simon Peter is proclaiming the good news, but he's doing that in the household. He's doing that in the house of Cornelius. Someone who was not a Jew, someone who was not a believer in God, someone who had a family, a Mrs. Cornelius, and little children, you know, corn elder, corn younger, and corn shucker. But they're all together. And Simon Peter, in his proclamation of the good news, is reminded of how God shows no partiality. And Simon Peter is as astounded by that as Simon is the resurrection. So may the good news indeed be proclaimed in your homes this day, in all sorts of places where you go, workplaces and hospitals, in places that we also stay away from. Because just like that first Easter, just like that tomb was empty in ancient Palestine on that first day of the week, there are plenty of churches and cathedrals empty this day, at least in the United States. Maybe somewhere around the world, Africa or Asia or South America, there are people gathering. And that's good news because they are proclaiming the gospel together even when we proclaim it apart. For we're all part of the Holy Catholic Church, meaning the church of all time and all places. The body of Christ, it also contains the figures from the resurrection like Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. How would you like to be the other Mary? <laughs> Maybe we are, all of us. It also includes Simon Peter and Cornelius. It includes 
Martin Luther and St. Teresa and all sorts of other saints who have gone before us. It includes Lutherans and non-Lutherans from around the world. And whether they are awake or asleep, whether they're working on the first day of the week or at rest, whether they are in worship or on a ventilator this day, whether they're serving as a nurse or a scientist or just serving as a good neighbor. Christ is risen, and I know someone somewhere around the world is proclaiming, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Perhaps on this day, this Feast of the Resurrection, as it's formally called, maybe this is a good day to remember that our church gatherings are always both local and universal. Every time we gather, our communion liturgy connects us with one another, but it also connects us across the continent and across cultures, with the distant past and with the future. As we join with the saints of every time and every place, that every really does mean every. And that every includes those who are recently baptized at St. Mark's, Sophia and Gunnar and Ava. It includes those who we remember this day who have died, especially recently, Larry Beaver, Jeanette Osborne, Bob Morrison, the daughter of Walter and Sherry Klepfer, Caroline, those on our prayer list this day as well, like Ann Holden's friend John and the mother of Ed Mills. We remember for living and deceased, saints present, saints past, and saint, saints future, that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus, as St. Paul wrote, were baptized into His death. Therefore, we have been buried with Him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with Him in a death like His, we shall certainly be united with Him in a resurrection like His. This is what our theology tells us. Now remember Matthew's resurrection account? In chapter 28 it opens with a poignant and timely reminder that the women had two emotions, fear and great joy. Today, I suspect a lot of us have fear, as well as great joy. Fear because of the coronavirus. Fear because of the pandemic. Fear because things have changed. Yet, we also have great joy when we stop to remember Christ among us, risen, living, that we are guided by Christ's Holy Spirit. That we will have joy when we also remember St. Paul's words in Romans 8. It is Christ Jesus who died, but who is also raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Therefore, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or cancer or COVID-19? No. In all these things, we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So yes, we may be worshiping at home, we may be sheltering in place, we may have some fear about what this is doing to the economy, but on this Easter Sunday, May we also be filled with great joy because we remember the promise that God resurrects bodies. And one day all of us will dance bodily with a risen Christ. Dancing, just like in that wonderful hymn we're going to sing in just a moment, I danced in the morning when the world was begun. Yes, we may be separated from one another, and there is some fear and anxiety about when we, when we come back together. But there is also great joy on this Easter Sunday because we remember that we have been practicing all our lives, whether it's 107 years like Margaret Kennerly or just a few months like some of us in worship. We have been practicing all our lives on the first Sunday of the week to proclaim the good news and then to serve no matter what the other days of the week, to be mindful that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us dance and sing.
with great fear and with joy. Amen. Let us profess our faith, the Easter faith, using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, all your creation praises you. The earth hums, the flowers bloom, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Savior Jesus Christ, you have traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace and glory, heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Especially, we remember the people we name silently. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus Christ, healer of all. Stay by our side in this time of uncertainty, anxiety, and sorrow. Be with those who are sick from the coronavirus. May they find the strength to make a full and rapid recovery. Be with those who have died during this pandemic. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are affected as they worry and grieve. Defend them from their illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with thee. Physicians and providers. Nurses. Medical assistants. Therapists. Technicians. Office workers. And all medical professionals who seek to heal. Help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the families of the medical workers as they worry about their loved ones. May they find peace in you. Be with the researchers who are working day and night to find effective treatments and a vaccine to stop this pandemic. Lift up each of these petitions from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hear our prayers. God, we lift up all these various concerns as well as those on our prayer list this day, including Teresa, Pat, Jack, Ken, Charlie, Jimmy, Adam, John, and all others that we now name in our hearts as well as from our lips. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died Especially this day, we lift up the Klepfer family, the Mills family, and the friends and of John Nestor, including Anne. Inspire us to live our lives in resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. After sharing the peace, we also then share our offering. 
I'm reminded on these children's bulletins, the cute little lamb, as well as a cross for Easter Sunday, with the story. After Jesus died, he was buried in a tomb. On the third day, something wonderful happened. The friends of Jesus discovered the empty tomb, and the stone was rolled away. The angels told them what had happened and proclaimed, Jesus Christ is risen. Alleluia. And a couple of children had these uh, on Carol's desk earlier this week, and a few other offerings have come in. Thank you very much for your generous support, offering-wise, financially-wise, as well as through all your prayers and all your ways of serving. Thank you. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. In the midst of our fears of scarcity, remind us of your abundant grace and love and power to overcome even death through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your holy name, O God. And we remember how in the night in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus loves you, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you, yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you, the Bible tells me so. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. And on this Easter Sunday, may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.